Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing a discovery of an extremely interesting and extremely massive binary black hole system that might finally help us resolve one of the biggest mysteries when it comes to binary black hole collisions, the mystery known as the final parsec problem. Something we've discussed in one of the older videos that you can find in the description below. And so this particular discovery suggests that there are definitely these really really massive black holes somewhere out there that are about to collide and are about to create extremely powerful gravitational waves. With this particular new discovery being one of the most exciting and one of the most unusual ones to date. But let's discuss this final parsec problem first and also discuss some of the previous discoveries from the last few years. So this problem refers to the idea behind black hole collisions. We know that for two black holes to collide with one another, there have to be a lot of different interactions between matter and between gravitational waves. So for example, when two different black holes are relatively far away from one another, they will generally come closer and closer once they start absorbing some of the material in between them. And at some point they will be close enough to one another that the actual gravitational waves formed through the interaction will cause them to move closer and closer as these gravitational waves slow down their orbits. This is something we've observed many many times with the famous LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, that detected many of these black hole collisions in the last few years since 2015. But all of these collisions to date were only of these smaller black holes, black holes that are generally less massive than approximately 100 masses of the Sun. When it comes to massive black holes, the ones we see in centers of different galaxies, the story is a little bit different. So first of all, we believe that these two massive black holes can generally come pretty close to one another during a typical galactic collision where two massive galaxies with massive black holes in the center come closer and closer to one another until they sort of start merging. And during this merger, somewhere in the middle, we kind of expect at least two massive black holes orbiting around one another. But there is a problem though. If these black holes are generally far apart from one another, here we're talking about at least a few hundreds of light years away, it's going to become extremely difficult for these black holes to approach closer and closer. At first they're going to absorb some of the gas and possibly even some of the stars in the vicinity to slowly decrease their orbits and to possibly move a little bit closer. But at a distance of about 4 light years away, they actually face a new problem. They're going to be creating some gravitational waves. But these gravitational waves are just going to be not powerful enough to influence the orbit of these very massive objects, mostly because the distance is still at least 4 light years away. And there's just not going to be enough material between these two massive black holes to influence their orbits further. And so in theory, they're going to be stuck in these positions possibly for billions or even trillions of years. And that's the essence of the so-called final parsec problem. The word parsec in this case refers to the distance of 3.26 light years. And so once these two massive black holes are at this distance, theoretically at least, they can never really come closer. And so many scientists for decades now tried to resolve this problem. First of all by looking around various galaxies and possibly finding some of these black holes that were maybe closer to each other. But secondly by trying to figure out if they do exist, how did they actually get closer. And interestingly enough, a few years ago, the scientists did discover at least one system that seemed to possess relatively massive black holes with orbits that were much closer. Here the system was known as OJ287 and we've talked about this in one of the videos in the description or somewhere right there. And it was essentially a system where a relatively massive black hole was orbiting around a super super massive black hole. Producing the effects you see right here, every time it passed through the accretion disk, it would actually create a very specific, very powerful explosion that was visible from far away. With all of this visible for many many years and all of this recreated in some of the recent studies. With both black holes also being really really massive. The smaller black hole here is significantly larger than the one in the Milky Way galaxy and would have a diameter of about 6 astronomical units. Whereas the larger black hole would actually have a diameter of 720 astronomical units and would cover the solar system completely. In terms of mass, the smaller one is about 150 million masses of the Sun and the larger one is about 18 billion masses of the Sun. One of the largest black holes ever found. 
And that was something from a few years ago. But back then, the scientists were possibly arguing that maybe something else is causing this. Maybe this is not actually two black holes, but instead a black hole and something else causing these explosions. And more importantly, there was still no answer for that so-called final parsec problem. So some of the other scientists started to keep looking. They wanted to find more galaxies, more quasars, more distant galaxies, where some of these observations could be maybe confirmed. And it looks like they found a galaxy that seems to possess something even more extreme. As in the galaxy that seems to possess very massive black holes that are definitely going to be colliding in the next 10,000 years, and that seems to definitely solve the so-called final parsec problem, suggesting that black holes can come closer. With all of this coming from a galaxy that's about 9 billion light years away from us, but in this case it's also an active galaxy, that's producing really powerful emissions through the astrophysical jet where the material is moving at about 99.8% of the speed of light. And normally we would refer to this type of an object as a quasar, but in this case the jet is almost directly pointed at us. It sort of looks like this. And because of this, this is referred to as a blazer, with the blazer itself known as PKS2131-021. And the way that the scientists discovered that there is a second black hole here was actually by looking at that jet, and specifically by analyzing data from several decades back, coming from a variety of different telescopes and various observatories that looked at this region for several years at a time. And so as they looked at the jet and the interaction of this jet with the nearby material, they noticed that there was a very unusual pattern forming resembling a typical sinusoidal wave, resembling some kind of a periodic activity. With all of this suggesting that something really massive was orbiting around the already massive black hole in the center. This periodicity has almost no other explanation. And in this case, the scientists were able to combine approximately 45 years of data from five different observatories, resulting in a graph that sort of looks like this. And the periodicity here is quite obvious. But obviously it's not constant, and this is of course something we expect from a typical quasar or active galactic nucleus. But just the fact that it's shifting back and forth, and the shifting seems to be quite periodic, suggests only one thing. This is two really massive bodies orbiting around one another. With both black holes in this case being much much more massive than the one in the middle of our own galaxy, but generally being somewhat similar to one another, several hundred million times the mass of our sun. With a single orbit of these black holes taking approximately two years, at a distance of about 2,000 astronomical units away from one another. It's about 50 times farther than Pluto is from the Sun. But also about 100 times closer than the two previously discovered black holes in the OJ287 system. And because the peaks from decades ago seem to match exactly the peaks from just a few years ago, this only implies that these objects have been in this permanent orbit for a pretty long time. And if so, it means that this is an exciting opportunity for a lot of reasons. First of all, gravitational waves. We're unable to see these gravitational waves yet because we just don't have the actual interferometer able to detect these types of waves just yet. But LISA, that's planned and will hopefully launch in the next decade, is going to be able to see these waves. And these waves are also expected to be some of the strongest gravitational waves we're ever going to be able to see, simply because of the mass of these black holes but their wavelength is going to be extremely long. In other words, their frequency is going to be very, very low. Remember, a single orbit is two years. So this might require some extreme observations from something entirely different, such as, for example, the pulsar array, or pulsar timing array, using various pulsars around our galaxy to try to calculate the gravitational waves that produce various variations in these pulsations of these very powerful neutron stars. You might want to check out previous videos somewhere right there or in the description that goes through a little bit more detail. And since these two black holes are expected to collide in the next 10,000 years, it's very likely that they're going to be producing some extreme gravitational waves whose effect is currently unknown to us. We actually have no idea what it's going to do to, for example, the galaxy or the solar system. Probably nothing, but trying to learn more about these massive black holes and their collisions is still quite intriguing. But does this actually solve the final parsec problem? Well, it sort of doesn't just yet. Mostly because, out of approximately 1000 different blazers investigated, this was the only one found that seemed to possess another black hole in the orbit of a massive black hole. 
In other words, this still seems to be pretty rare and still doesn't explain why we don't see more of these massive collisions across the universe. At the same time, if you were to look at this graph right here, you'll notice that there is a slight decrease or slight variation in the emissions right around this area. Something that went back to normal approximately 17 years ago. And this only implies one thing. It really implies that this is in regards to the activity of the black hole. In other words, it's a strong suggestion that there is some kind of a supermassive black hole that's active in the middle and another really massive black hole orbiting around it, disturbing it in some way. And the decrease of activity we observe in this graph is just a typical variation of a typical supermassive black hole, something that's been seen many, many times before. So definitely an exciting discovery in regards to that biggest mystery of the universe, the final parsec problem. But the scientists are hoping to find more of these black holes. They want to find more of these unusual galaxies in order to really figure out how some black holes are able to come closer to one another. How do they find a way to cover this final four light years distance? There's got to be some process or some mechanism by which black holes come closer to one another. And because two such galaxies have now been discovered and confirmed by various studies and various sciences, it only makes this even more intriguing. And unfortunately for now, that's really all we have about this unusual system with these two unusual black holes. Once we learn something else, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Also check out the current charities I'm supporting, and the reasons for why I'm supporting them in the video in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.